Hey everyone, Case here, and today I'm going to do an interesting video that will be new for the channel. As those who are longtime subscribers, this is D13 Airsoft, so Airsoft centric channel. However, we do do other content. Uh, for those new to the channel or just finding this video, welcome. Uh, this is an odd one for us. However, maybe in time you'll be seeing more of this. See, I have a side passion of messing with tactical gear and in some cases sewing my own tactical gear. I don't have all the most advanced equipment yet, but it is something I like to do as a hobby. Now, I was debating whether or not I would ever do anything sewing related for the channel, but an opportunity arose. So here's this video and for YouTube, a new playlist to add under tactical sewing. Now the goal of this video is trying to show you one method you could do to make the most out of surplus pants and turning them into combat pants with a simple modification for, for the most part materials you already have on hand. What you need is the surplus pants themselves and a couple of strips of Velcro. It'd be great if you have a home sewing machine. If not, you can do it by hand, though the stitches is probably gonna look a lot uglier and take a lot longer. When we complete this mod, the goal will be to have a cry precision knee pad insert of similar size or other companies of similar size being able to be inserted roughly around the knee area of these pants and give you essentially a poor man's combat pant. Here's a close up of a surplus United States Marine Corps digital mark pad combat trousers or issue trousers, issue uniform, whatever the nomenclature you want to call it. They're plain Jane pants that are camo that do not have a way to integrate knee pads into their actual pants. Now, if you wanted to get a USA made combat pant that does integrate these type of knee pads into it, you're probably looking at 250 plus dollars easily. Now with this, I got these pants for like 20 bucks at a surplus store and probably less than $5 in terms of the materials I use today, assuming you already have a sewing machine. What you see here with most US made uniform pants is there is a second layer of fabric above the knees. You see they follow the stitch line on each end of the seams of the pants and if you take the seams out here you can actually have two different layers of fabric without directly touching your knees. Only the back of the second fabric is touching your knee, this one is not. Remove the stitching, replace it with some velcro and now you have a flap or opening to put your cry precision knee pads. Now in this case, it is a little narrow, so sometimes this material you will have to be shaved off or you just cram it in there, it gets a little cramped. But for 20 bucks, that's a much better option than going out of your way to get to 150 to 300 plus dollars in combat pants. In these pants case, I've had them for about four to six months with this modification and the stitching is holding up pretty well, even though I don't have an industrial sewing machine. Here are some much older BDU pants with a similar mod. Now the, the stitching during the sewing machine had much higher tension on it, kind of messed up there, but even despite it being incredibly ugly, the Velcro has held up, the material still is intact, and it still has a gap for me to turn these old BDU surplus pants into pants that can integrate cry precision knee pads. So what we have here today are some Serbian made M-MDU-10 camo pants. This belongs to Nico or D12 of D13 Airsoft. He is a team member of us and he said, hey, I know you've done these modifications on your own pants. Can you do it for me with the same result? And I said, sure, I'll give it a try. And thus this video is being made. Now this camo was made in 2010 and has been used since in the Serbian military. Unfortunately, despite being 14 years old, it is still very difficult to find any of these pants, or at least in this camo, that have integrated knee pads. Heck, it's kind of challenging even to find these trousers at all in the United States. So, having one here, we're going to modify it and allow it to take these cry precision knee pads. Now, something I did notice about these pants that's different from a lot of the American made ones is the second layer of fabric does not go all the way around to the seam. It actually tapers down to about five and a half inches right here, which is much more narrow. I'll still do the Velcro strips and I'll just have to cram it in and then put it in here. It'll be a little more of a tight fit, but it'll still work. And though I will say it is seemingly taller as it curves around at the top of the stitching here, which is a little more unique, which means when these knee pads are in, they're not gonna be so cramped up at, as you saw in say these type of pants. So let's begin. All right, so step one is going to be locating these two stitch lines. So stitch line here and the second here. All we're gonna do is remove it from this corner and this corner and just remove all of that without doing too much damage to the fabric itself. I got some sewing scissors here. There's other tools you can use. You can look that up on your own. 
um, but just remove that stitching. Remove the two layers of stitching and as you can see it is now open and you can freely put anything in here. Now what we're going to do next is I have roughly five inches of velcro both hook and loop. I was running low on material so I got some ranger green and multicam. Not the end of the world. It really doesn't matter what you guys use here as long as it's some sort of velcro. You can probably buy some at Walmart for crying out loud. With that said, roughly five inches is going to go here on the inside. And then the other five is going to be sewn here so that you can make the Velcro seam. Do you do that when you go to over to our sewing machine? Now, what you are seeing is me using a Bernina 1008 sewing machine. This is not a industrial machine. You do not need an industrial machine. Again, if you really want to, you can hand sew this, though it's going to take longer and more of a pain. Now, I'm going to start with the first layer of Velcro. It doesn't matter which one's a hook or loop. I'm just doing the one that's on the base layer of fabric that's going to be physically touching your knee on the other side. I just lined it up by eye because I can see the old stitch line. If you want to mark it to make it more even, go for it, but quite frankly, it doesn't have to be that precise. This is a down and dirty job that will get the job done. So we're just going to sew it up. Don't forget the back stitch. I'm going to do a rectangle, so I am doing uh, front back and then the sides of each rectangle of fabric as you will see here. And at each step of the way feel free to cut some excess material and use a lighter to clean up some loose threads. I personally was using Milsec threading here but really any threading would do. Just be careful of any cotton based threading if you're going to use a lighter. But that's some basic sewing 101. The stitching isn't the cleanest by any means but it'll get the job done and we can move on to the next step. Now we add the second piece of Velcro outside of that. Go ahead and line up the, the Velcro onto the material, start sewing, and figure it out. So we sew the two pieces of Velcro where they need to be, and you can seam the two pieces of fabric together with them. However, what you've probably already noticed is that the stitching on the sides still need to be re-sewn. So the way we're going to clean that up is just put it back under the machine and sew those sides back together to help reinforce them. I did this off camera, but you can see the end results. Alright, I re-sewed the corners off camera. Pretty simple, and as you'll probably see with all of this, this is a pretty ugly stitching job it's not the best by any stretch but at the end of the day it's still going to do the job and unless you get right up to it no one's really going to know so don't be afraid to give this a shot even if you've never done a sewing project like this before now i want to cut away and we're going to go do the other one off camera all right so i did the other one off camera and this is the end product both sides have now have cuts at the bottom with velcro sewn on both sides causing a pocket in between these two layers of fabric. So let's open them up and see if it works. So starting with this, I'm just gonna scoop it in, kind of manipulate this a little bit, because as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it is a little tighter than other pants I've done. However, it's here. And what's interesting about these Serbian pants is it actually does go further up than a lot of the American-made pants. So that actually works quite well. Let's see if I can make that a little straighter. All right. There we go. Let me put the other one in. Uh, I got Nico over here. Let's see him wearing it, and I'll show you what it looks like. All right, so you can see here Nico's wearing the pants now with the knee pad, the cry precision knee pad inserts in. And they're right here on his knee. His kneecap is right here. The hard shell is right here. And we already tested earlier when he bends his legs down onto the ground, actually on it, especially these crack precision pads where they have the fold inside the 
um, hardened shell portion. It allows both sides of that knee, uh, knee pad to go over the kneecap, which is perfect. So we got pretty lucky with this one. Each pant is a little different and by design. Um, the American made ones, sometimes this knee pad might be just a little bit higher with some of the kneecap being, or the, the protection cap being higher above the knee. Again, everyone's body's different. Uh, along with the pant model. But overall, this is a very cheap way to make everyday um, uniform pants into something a little more practical with the integration of knee pads without having to spend 250, 300 plus dollars on a combat pant. Uh, guys, this was a pretty interesting one. Uh, if the camera angles were a little off to you, I apologize. Feel free to hit me up and ask me some questions. I'll be happy to help. Uh, tell me if you guys want to see more content like this. Uh, with that said, thank you guys for watching. See you around next time. Bye. <laughs>